Hi, everybody. This is Brian Powers with New Jersey Revolution Radio Live, coming to you with a report and an update from Patterson, New Jersey, and our comrade, Jameek Lowry. We will not be having the regular show this week um, because we're just going to take a week off. We had a lot go on with the Cannabis Forum and other events, but we are here right now with our comrade because we haven't gotten a really good update from you in a few weeks since you've been in studio uh cory thanks for joining us today Uh, oh yes how are you brother i'm doing good bro i'm doing good i mean the struggle the struggle continues but we're doing what we got to do absolutely yeah absolutely so it's been about a month since we had you in studio but i've made a point to mention jameek lowry's name on the podcast here um and uh you know also you know at every event i can I, I put the hashtag on there for new jersey revolution radio where we can and i've heard some progress come out of patterson um i know we haven't gotten the ultimate result yet but right. we're having an impact uh, you are having an impact the family is having an impact the community is having an impact and uh, i'm glad to have you on today to tell us about it yes sir um i just want to first of all Thank all of the folks online here who have been with us. Um, I do want to say something. There's a lot of folks that you don't see on the front lines in terms of maybe sharing or talking, but they are in the background. They are making connections and they are doing everything they can to make sure that this case is heard. So I want to, I want to thank them uh, from the bottom of my heart because I know without them, we wouldn't be able to push this. All right. I definitely want to do that. I definitely want to make that that um, that observation. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. whether or not whether or not you're out front with a bullhorn or you're in the back typing an email to someone or sharing a, a post or starting your own group to discuss what's going on, you know, we, I thank you. Uh, as far as the Jamie case goes, as you know, we are waiting. For them to do what they said they're going to do in terms of getting the information out to the public. And in the meantime, though, we're going to continue to bring the pressure. Um, as I think, did I mention the names of the police officers that? I think you've mentioned them on the Facebook page and, and I've seen yeah. them post and I believe maybe we've shared, but I have no problems with you speaking the truth right here on the podcast while we're, while we're here. Okay. So, you know, we have uh, right now. Uh, from what we understand, Michael Michael Avila is an officer in Patterson that has a very bad temper. We I, I remember posting an article about him recently um, that took place about a year ago when he was pretty much beating a lady um, in in a prison cell, not a prison cell, but at the jail, the, the, the city lockup on Broadway, 111 Broadway. Jesus. So it's not far fetched um, to think that a police officer would do that. Additionally, I, you know, I'm going to might as well say this live. If you go on my page or any of the pages where they're speaking about Jameek Larry and you see him uh, in the casket, you'll notice that the shirt he has on and the sweater he has on there, they have it tucked so far underneath, almost to where all you can see is his skin and not his neck. And I keep telling people that I feel like the brother was strangled. You know, I feel like well, we could see clearly when he went into uh, 111 Broadway, police headquarters, police headquarters, he was not beaten up, he was not bruised, any of that. So, we, we know that he was beaten up and bruised, but I also feel like, in my heart, that that man was strangled after he was beaten. After they beat him senselessly like that, I believe that they strangled him to make sure that he would be dead, you know? Mm. Um, uh, as, as, as it goes right now, there's some information that I wish I could share with the public, but the family... You know, they, they strictly want to make sure that the, that, the, that the attorneys are the first ones to kind of do the breaking news. You know what I mean? Like a press conference and what have you. So, you know, out of respect to the family, there's some things I just can't mention. But I will say that the FBI is in Patterson. Like I said, the council meeting on TV, the FBI is here investigating this case, among other cases. And, and we do know that, that ultimately somebody's going to jail, somebody's going to lose a job. Some of those council people up there are going to lose their seats because, we, you know, the family went to them and asked them to assist them. And I don't know if you remember this. The, uh, there's, there's a um, thing on YouTube here, and I just want to read it real quick. When I was um, on YouTube today, sometimes I, I look at the council meetings 
And um, I was looking at a council meeting in Houston, Texas, and there was a, a situation where they were looking to uh, hire firefighters. The firefighters had already been through the training and everything, but the city did not want to confirm those firefighters. They were of color, of course. So in a council meeting, any, any item on the consent agenda can be taken off the table by one council person. So there was a councilman in Houston, hmm. um, Dwight Boykins. Every single motion that they had on the table, except for the anything involving the children, which was about two items, but every other item on the agenda, he pulled them all because he said, we're not going to have any discussion about any city business until we get to the discussion about the firefighters and bringing them on. I'm saying, why can't we have some bold and brave council members here who could pull everything off of the agenda and say, you know, we're not going to talk about anything until we have a, a committee of the whole, bring the mayor, the police director, the police chief, bring them to the carpet and demand that they give us some answers as to what their procedures are. Because, you know, there wasn't any report done, not a decent one. The report that they did doesn't match what we saw. You saw it yourself. Well, it's not the so, whole truth. That's the thing. I mean, it's, it's right. Like no, they're they're bait. You, we know they're omitting things. Why are they omitting things? I think, right? You know, looking at it from the outside, looking in, yeah, it's just it's obvious that there's like you hear this story and you're like, wait, so why did they hit him in the first place? Why was he in? Right. Why why didn't they give him a fucking cup of water? You know, sure. I, it's there's so many questions that are just unanswered. You know, it's a cover up, and that's what the problem. Indeed. Um, even from the outside looking in now, I want to touch on the FBI's involvement because we've okay. seen, and if anybody wants to say that, you know, we're police bashing or anything, you need to do a little bit of research into the Patterson Police Department. I there's, tell you. There's a videotape out there of a cop videotaping another cop slap a mentally ill suicidal man in the hospital. And I think yeah. it's two years for that, right, Corey? Yeah. Two years for that, which, you know, I mean, and this... This police department, I mean, is just ridiculously violent. So, um, Corey, I give you a lot of credit for standing up for your community. Um, although I, I would like to, to, to mention, I mean, you didn't ask me to bring this up, by the way. We don't do pre-interviews here on New Jersey Radio. Right. But right. I know you've been taking slap from some opponents that, oh, you're a loudmouth. You're causing trouble. You don't represent the family. Um, and I know... Right having kind of similar accusations made against myself and my activists, it's typical for our enemies to say nobody. Of course. Of course. It's a way of attacking your self-esteem. Um, how, how have you been? I know this is about the family. This is about Jameek. Right. But you have a large activist following here. And I think it's important for activists to understand that, you know, it's real when you get hurt. Right. Um, yes. I, yeah. How you been holding up? How you been holding up as you fight the good fight? Uh, you know, lately in the beginning, it wasn't as bad in terms of the different attacks, but lately it's the, the attacks have been amped up, but on different levels. Right. Um, not to take away from the topic of Jameek, but I also helped to advocate a case uh, for a young lady named Michelle Jackson. I don't know if you remember that story in Patterson, uh, where her ex-boyfriend shot her five times, beat her, pistol whipped her and all of this and, and left her for dead. She didn't die. She didn't die. She was strong enough to tell her story, and she's, you know, still here today to tell a story. But he was recently sentenced to life in prison. Um, and it seems like now some of the family members who originally thanked me for helping her have decided to now come out and attack me on social media. Right. Now, I mean, you know, I get it. You're upset because your family member, or whatever the case may be, but hey, look, he knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? And they know as an activist, I fight for justice for the victims, for the people that need help. Mm. And when you come to me for help, I'm going to make sure it gets done. So lately, I've been getting a lot more. I haven't really gotten a lot of heat about the Jameet case. If so, it might be behind the scenes. But this other case that I helped advocate for from last year, yeah, they're starting to come out of the woodwork um, with different insults and things. It's right on my page, too. No. Um, so that, like you said, that's part of the struggle. You know, my father was a, a, a used to be a, a Black Panther back in the day, and he said that um, one thing about being an activist, you have to, you have, and he meant it in a joking way. He said you have to try to learn as many languages as you can, so you know what people are calling you. You know, you know what the names are calling you. <laughs> yeah, you got to try to learn as many languages as possible. You know, because if you get attacked, you're always under attack. Yeah, yeah you know? 
it does happen. Well, you know, I didn't want to get too far off the subject, but I think, right. you, and I know, like I said, to those listening, you know, uh, this has always been about the family and justice, right. family, but you know, I appreciate what you do, man. And, and I get, and activists out there that listen should get that, you know, um, mm -hmm. back to the case now. So, as far as the FBI being involved, and I know that, um, you know, you can't speak as to, you know, some details, but right. what right. De what demands are there from the family right now that are public, that are, are yet to be met, um, and, and that we should be watching for, you know, out of our federal, as our federal government, who I don't trust right. much either. Well, Patterson, well, well, I know the family wants, you know, the mayor... And city council to just come out with the truth, you know. To I know they say you know, there's an ongoing investigation, but you know the mayor and the council, they you know the family really wants them to step up and hold you know the police department accountable for what happened. Because obviously, as you also pointed out, if nothing was wrong, and then like like folks who have nothing to hide hide nothing. You understand what I mean? So. And like you referred to earlier, there's an obvious cover-up. So I believe that the family really wants the elected officials, the people who said that they're going to be there for the community, to come out and tell the truth about what happened. Even though the FBI is involved now, they still want those in who are in public office to come out. And I don't understand why they, what part of for the people, by the people, do they do they not understand? You know, you, you know what I mean? But it, it shows that that. Everyone is in everyone's pocket, apparently, because a lot of these folks are too, too quiet. So I believe the family really wants them to come out and say, this is what happened. And and make sure that the people that are responsible, you know, are, are reprimanded. And I, I, I truly believe the second part about them being reprimanded and punished, I think that's coming sooner than we think. Because they've already arrested a few police officers in other areas that I believe were in relation to some of the situation with you. That's what I believe. Uh, that's, so that's, I, I think they're coming for. I think they're gonna come for those other officers. I really believe. I hope so because they don't need to be on the streets uh, around our people if they're if they find no if they have no um, uh, disregard for life. You know what I mean for human life. It's it's so prom it's promising news, but of course, like I said, the ultimate goal and, and it isn't there yet. Uh, right. I want to make sure that people who may be hearing this for the first time and, and want to go back understand that you can look at New Jersey Revolution Radio for our list. We have an interview. If you just use the search bar and put in Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, right. his in studio interview will pop up so you can get a little more background. But also you can go um, to some Facebook pages. Uh, Corey, um, can you make sure that people know where to go so they can get the latest and greatest from you uh, and uh, the family, of course? Okay, um, they, can, they can very well go to uh, Corey L. Teague on Facebook. You can type in Corey L. Teague, and you'll see me with my you know, my Kango hat on, and that's, that's, that's my page. My page. Um, or you can go to Corey Lewis Teague. You'll see uh, Black Panther logo, and they'll have, you know, the Sisters of Jamaica on there. That's, that's the other page you can go to. And then on, um, on Instagram, also I type Corey L. Teague. And it will come up. You know, and I, and I'm, always, I'm posting, every day I'm posting updates on the Jamie case, and I'm also posting pictures of them, um, posting information. Like, my goal is to not allow this to die down. And, and, and for the most part, it yeah. has. Uh, people are talking about it. They're mentioning it. And you can't give a point now. Okay, I mean, I'm talking about like, the bad side, the good side. I mean, I was at Walgreens today. Somebody, said, oh, no, no, I'll take care of that for you. You know, people start starting to notice you. Good. Coming down the street, people are driving by, they'll slow down, they'll put their fists in the air. It's the same. So, even though there's negative, there's also a lot of positive things about that. If people are getting to fight for them, they're going to fight for their care. So, those are the best ways. Corio T, you can find me on Twitter. Corio T as well. I'm posting things in there, posting things in my uh, Instagram, Instagram, and we're just, we're just, we're just, we're just social media yeah. to get, to get, to get our work done.
It's 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 working. I think it's how I found you. Um, I, I I am a firm believer in in uh, Facebook and and digital activism. I know right, some right. people poo poo right, right. it as oh, you got to get in the streets. You got to get in the streets. But I think you know if you want right, to right, talk, right. if you want to talk to a wider audience, if you want to get people who are too busy because they're working five or six jobs. You know, you can use social media. Yeah, You've yeah. done an excellent job at that, Corey. Uh, I want to thank you for hopping on uh, one more time. You know that, uh, you know, you can message me um, if you want to find out how, you know, you yourself can get involved uh, with what's going on here. Please, um, you know, reach out to us here on uh, at www.njrevolutionradio.com. We'll point you in the correct dir uh, direction uh, so that you can stay informed as to what's going on with the fight for justice for Jamique as well as all kinds of activism going around the state of New Jersey. Thanks for stopping with us real quick here on New Jersey Revolution Radio. Make sure you share this out. And we're taking a week off from the Wednesday live stream, but we will be back next week. Peace out, everybody. Peace. Peace.